All right, now the door buck. Um, you can make it out of two by fours if you want. Of course, my comment about two by fours is there aren't any straight ones left in the United States, so it's probably not a good idea. But two by sixes is kind of a standard. And then you have a, a detail that you'll have to deal with on the plaster to cover up that, that buck. Um, we went for two by tens here, so we don't have a whole lot of detail work inside around the door. It's just gonna, this is a baño after all, and uh, so that will be the finished product um, in there. So we paid a little bit more money for two by tens, but we're, we're good. Now it's real important that this is plumb. <laughs> So we want to put a level on it. He's Might. getting a shim for it. So. Okay, and, and shim it, yeah. Always a step ahead, Austin. And <laughs> is this uh, pressure treated no. that you're using? Or? No, it's not. It's not. And the reason it's not is that you need pressure treated if the wood is in contact with concrete that is in contact with the ground. Oh. Okay. Um, I tore into an old uh, adobe house in El Rito, New Mexico, many years ago that had been there for... 150 years and they had used wooden window bucks but they were buried in earthen plaster and had adobes up next to them and when you tore into it the wood looked just like this wow you know because the clay it's as i've said several times we're not magic but almost magic you know because it sucks that moisture away from the from the wood and basically is a preservative the um uh, gussets these these plywood triangles are to keep the door buck perfectly square. We build it on the ground, we pull our diagonals, we get it perfect, and then we put the gussets on it so it stays that way. You could brace it off by putting something from here to here and save it, but then you lost the door. You know, so I prefer the little triangles. Same thing on the windows. You could brace them diagonally, but if you use if you do the corners, then you can still pass stuff through the window. And this this buck's a little different than most. We're gonna end up when we get up there with the blocks. We're going to take this one off because we're going to put an arch over the door. Okay, we're going to have a little arch for them. You may have seen there's a couple of them over here. The little one is for this door, the big one's for the roof. Is it, you're going to leave the, one on the, the horizontal one on the bottom? No, we'll take it out too, probably, and put some kind of threshold here depending on where we end up inside. The idea is to end up inside flush with the top of the concrete with our earthen floor. We're just gonna use earth blocks for the why not? Um, I was thinking we would do it after the fact, and I remember we have to have it in before the toilet parts go in. So we'll be doing that soon. Okay, do we have a level handy anywhere? Uh oh, there we go. Did you check that uh, door buck? Oh, the shim, he's getting the shim, okay. Now, frequently we'll brace these off, you know, something from the top down to the ground to keep it plumb. But the braces are uh, kind of a pain in construction because you're, you have to move around them all the time. You're moving around the building, you gotta go out around the brace and all that kind of stuff. That's why we like these kind of braces on the story poles because they're tight to the building and you're walking around the building or taking a wheelbarrow around the building or driving a skid steer around the building, whatever, you don't have to go out around the, the braces. Same thing with the door. And if we can just keep it plumb for a couple of courses manually, then we can screw it right into the blocks and we're good to go. And then as we move up, about every three courses, we'll screw it again. And each time we do, we double check and we're plumbing it all the way up so that when we get done, it's, it's perfectly plumbed.